Praise the Lord. God is good. Amen. All the time. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Why don't we stand up on our feet this morning and, and worship the Lord? He is worthy to be praised, isn't he? Today's a great day. We're, we're, we're having our church family picnic, and so I hope everybody stays afterwards. And, and uh, I just want to give you a quick reminder, everyone who has paid, um, right as soon as you walk out of here after service, there's a table outside. And uh, if you've already paid, you're going to get a wristband so that we know over here it'll be easier with the food guy and everything else. But, and if you haven't and you do want to come, uh, you could come. Tickets are $100 today, so. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's the same price, but we'll, uh, you know, we'd love to have you stay. There'll be plenty of food, so praise the Lord. That'll make you, that'll make you act sooner, won't it? Probably not a bad idea, but anyway. Uh, <laughs> God is good. Amen. I love the Lord. Does, who else loves the Lord in this place? Let's just lift our hands towards heaven and just thank him. He is worthy to be praised. Father, we worship you. God, you're so good. You're so faithful. Father, our trust and our hope is in you. And, and even if we don't feel it, even if we don't see it, and if we can't sense it in our natural realm, it doesn't matter because by faith is how we live, Father. And so we thank you that you're always working on our behalf. You're working things out for us. Good things are coming our way, and the best is yet to come, Father. And so we worship you today, and we just set our hearts before you and lift up your holy name. Amen. Amen. Who am I that the highest
nothing else that I'd rather be than a child of the king. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. He is so good. Oh, 
Lift your voices to him. Worship him. Blessings, Father. Oh, your praise shall continually be in our mouth, Father. Thanksgiving be upon our lips, Lord. Thank you, You're so wonderful to us. You're so, there is none like you. Tell him that. There is none like you, Father. There is none like you. There is no other thing like you. Not even a close second. Nothing. Nothing like you. Thank you, Nothing, God. You're so good. You're so faithful. Even when we don't see it, you're faithful. We believe it. We live by faith. And we know, we know that you have and you're working out all things to our good. Say that right now. All things are working out for our good. You know why? Because God holds your future. Glory to God. And he's a good God. Hallelujah. In love. 
the darling of heaven. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Always making intercession for us. Father, we worship you. May you be glorified today. Thank you. Thank you for helping us. Thank you for healing us, for providing for us. God, you're so good. You're so faithful. May you be glorified today in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Well, you guys may be seated, and we're going to continue to worship the Lord with our giving, with yes, our substance, and we're still yeah, in an attitude of worship, um, and, and uh, you know, we've been worshiping him with our song, and uh, he wants us to honor him with the substance that he's provided for us, amen, and uh, how many believe that he is Jehovah Jireh? Well, yes, Come on. I mean, you know, we say that, is he really your Jehovah Jireh? Yes, he is. He's mine. He's my source. I don't worry about a thing. As long as I trust him and I obey him, he sees to it that everything that I need, I have. Work out for the and in due season, I will be getting everything yeah. that his word has promised <laughs> yeah. to me yeah. if I hold fast. Amen. Amen. Uh, Galatians chapter 6. If you need an offering envelope, the ushers are, are in the aisle. You can raise your hand. Let them know. If you're giving online, you can do that. Text or offering to uh, uh, the number on the screen. <laughs> Eight seven three two eight five six five zero five zero. Amen. And uh, it's far away, man. Uh, uh, there's multiple ways of giving, but listen, the most important thing that you can get at this moment is to obey what the Spirit of God is prompting you to do. Amen. There's always a blessing in obedience. Amen. Get your mind out of the picture because your mind may tell you something different, but we are spirit-led, right? We're not yes. flesh-led. Yes. We're not head-led. We're spirit-led. Amen. Amen. And so if we'll obey God, then we could claim the scriptures that he says, prove me this day that I will not open up the windows of heaven and pour out blessings into your life. And God, how many believe God wants to see you prospering? God wants to see you blessed. And and when you recognize him as Jehovah Jireh, your source, he is your source. Your job's not your source. 
And thank God it's not because you may not have a job tomorrow. Well, isn't that the truth? We all, right. you know, we're, we're hoping for the best, yes, that it'll still be there. But if for some reason we've seen recently that things happen, right. right, that nobody ever expected, right. if God is your source, you will Woo. not be moved. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. You will not be moved. You will not be shaken. God can cause a flood in the middle of the desert Amen. if he needs to in your life. But if we'll obey him, then we'll, we will be blessed. And I was reading Galatians chapter 6 and verse 7 talks about, uh, what you sow is what you'll reap. Amen. What you sow is what you'll reap. So if it's if it's things that you need, then sow a seed this morning. Obey the Spirit of God. Trust Him, and then water it with your words, with your yes. confession Amen. every day. Father, I thank you that the seed that I know you told me to give is growing. Yes. It's prospering, yes. and the ministering angels are yes. working on my behalf. Hallelujah causing yes. it to come to me. Is that good news or what? Yes. That's not Amen. a poverty mentality. That's not a I need, need, need mentality. That is a free mentality. Amen. Yes. That is knowing that every one of my needs are met according to his riches and glory. And friends, he has a whole lot of riches and glory. Yes, hallelujah. A whole lot, a whole lot. He can do the impossible if we'll believe it. Amen. If we'll believe it. And, uh, and, uh, and our obedience, giving in faith, activates that power yes, in your life. Hallelujah. Amen. God is our source here in this church, yes. and he's been doing the miraculous for yes. us. And he's continuing to do it. And it's it, it needs to be a blessing for all of us. Yes. We want to, as a church, I want to see everybody in here flowing in that same gift Amen. and anointing. Overflowing. Amen. God's bringing you to a green pastures, to your own place. Amen. Prospering. Prospering. And it's done by giving and recognizing him as our source, Amen. trusting him and then obeying. Amen. Amen. And he's been faithful and the best is yet to come. Glory to God. And as a church, just so you know, we sow. We're a tithing church. Yes. We Amen. give. And, uh, and as we tithe, as the Lord directs us to different ministries and to, to missions, uh, you're, you have a part in that. You have seed in that. Amen. So the blessing that they're getting and doing over there is going to come upon you. It's coming upon us. Do you believe that this morning? Yeah. Just because you can't go to the Samoan Islands, your seed can. Yes. And it's producing Amen. over there. There's hundreds of people yes, that have no idea what Christmas is, that are receiving salvation. I don't know if we understand the full. They are receiving Jesus in their hearts. Amen. In the South Pacific Amen. Uh, island with maybe 100 native people on it. They're hearing the same gospel that we're hearing right now because of one person's obedience and ours to, to, to support that work. Thank People you. are coming to know the Lord, the uttermost. And when the uttermost have all heard, the book gets closed, Amen. and that's it. And that's it. And we have a, we, we have, we're laying up treasures in heaven, man. It's, it's glorious. It's magnificent, and we're thrilled about it. So uh, we're grateful for your faithfulness and your obedience. And know this, that we're not giving to a church. We're giving to God. Yes. We're sowing to God. Thank you. We're sowing to God. God is our source. And here at this place, just like he's your source in your own personal lives. Amen. And together, we'll do exactly what he's called for us to do. You, at a higher, great level. Not barely get by, but at a great level. So much that we have to just give it away. We have to give it away. We have to go to shop right and pay for the people that are standing behind us. Yeah. Yeah. Be because because we have so much. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. I don't know about Amen. you. That excites me. Amen. But, but pastor, when? I don't know when. I don't care when. Yeah. But I know this. It happen. It's happening. Yes. It's coming. Yes. It's coming. I mean, I Hallelujah. see it by faith. I thank God that all of my needs are met right now. I have everything I need. I'm blessed. Amen. But there's more to come because it's not just about me. I want to be a blessing to other people. Amen. 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 You know, and if I don't have, how can I help others, right? That's why, amen. So you reap what you sow. Thanks, you amen. reap what you sow. Amen. It's very simple. So let's sow big and let's reap big. Woo. Amen. Yes. Trust the Lord. He's faithful. Let's pray and then we'll receive our offering. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the time together, Lord. We thank you for, uh, for your word. Your word is life. Your word is health. It's peace. It's hope to us. And so, Father, we just release faith together as we sow our seed today in obedience to what you've prompted us to do, a, a cheerful, quick-to-do-it, willing type of giver. 
Father, we thank you that you said in your word that if, if we do this, that you would take care of the devourer for our sake. You'd cause our stuff to, to work, to grow, to yeah, increase, and you'd rebuke him for our sake. You take care of that. And we thank you that you open up the windows of heaven and you bless the fruit of our labor, the fruit of our lips, the fruit of our hands, everything that we touch as we honor you. And I speak that blessing over the church today and over all that are giving, Father. Yeah. As your under shepherd here, the blessing be upon them, Father. Bless their Amen. obedience and their faithfulness in their giving, Lord. Cause Lord. their barns to burst open with yeah. plenty, Father. Hallelujah. And every need Thanks. of this church and every need of every person in here is met according to your riches and glory. And every debt is reduced and eliminated, Father. We have more than enough because that's a God that we serve. Amen. And we thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen, amen. and amen. amen. Glory to God. Hang on, I gotta find a song. All right, stay with me. <laughs> uh, I think we're gonna do. Uh... social distance if so be tell them you're glad to see him and then you can be seated Check one, two. Praise the Lord. God is good. Amen. Amen. This is the day the Lord has made. That was a good time of worship. Amen. Amen. The presence of God is, is real. And you know what? You don't have to wait for Sunday mornings to have that. <laughs> you can have that happening in your life all the time. All the time. But, Pastor, I don't feel like it. Didn't say you had to feel like it. <laughs> Never said anything about feeling. It's doing it by faith. Just start rejoicing. You, you can't tell me you can't think of one thing. To rejoice about in your life? You can, you can. I mean, your eyes are blinking, right? You got breath coming out. That's got plenty to be thankful for. <laughs> plenty to be thankful for. Amen, amen. Why don't we have a testimony? So why don't you come on up here? You guys could uh, grab this mic here right behind you, and and, and you guys could share Is your testimony. Ever... Glory to God. <laughs> okay. Good morning, church. God bless you all. Um, uh, for those of you who don't know me, my name is Mosley, and this is my mom, Murray. Uh, I'm mostly going to be the one talking here, but <laughs> uh, I just really want to thank you all for giving me this opportunity to share this testimony that I had all the way back in March. But I just praise the Lord. He is worthy and so worthy of all the praise and the glory and the honor. 
So on March 28th, I, I just, I believe that the Lord works with me through dreams and visions. So I, on March 28th, I was meditating on God. I was fasting and praying and I was asking the Lord to give me a dream because I, I wanted to know what I needed to pray for, what I need to focus on and what's going to happen because I, I, I really believe that the Lord talks to me. So, amen, amen. Uh, on March 29th, I had a dream about the rapture, but um, in a part of the dream, I saw my nephew go straight to heaven. So, I, I didn't really think much about my nephew going straight to heaven. I was just excited about the fact that I saw Jesus coming. <laughs> um, but uh, when I woke up, I was actually really excited. I wrote everything down from the top of the dream to the bottom. I told my parents, but at the same time, the Holy Spirit gave me an urgency in my heart towards the afternoon. He said, you need to tell the parents of Jeremiah. Jeremiah is my nephew. You need to tell them to pray because something is going to happen. I, I, I felt like something was going to happen. So uh, I told my, my uh, sister-in-law and my brother that I, I think you guys need to pray because I just, I feel like something is going to happen. I obeyed the Holy Spirit because obedience is better than sacrifice. And I just wanted, I didn't want to hold back anything. So on March 30th, that following night, uh, I was watching a video about the end times because I was so excited. I was doing research about the rapture because I just had a dream about the rapture. So cool. But uh, <laughs> amen, amen. And, and we know that we're living in the end times. But uh, anyway, I had my um, headphones in and I heard the loudest scream in the kitchen of my house. So, and you know, I had my headphones in a full volume. So I literally threw off my headphones, threw them on my bed. I jumped out of my bed and I ran to the kitchen. I, and I saw my mom come out. I saw my dad come out. And I said, what's going on? We see my sister-in-law screaming, crying. I said, what's going on? What's going on? She said, it's Jeremiah. He passed out. I don't know what's happening. I, I don't know what happened. His mouth was shut tight. When I saw him, he looked lifeless. His head was back. And I said, oh, my Lord, that is the devil. And, you know, when the devil is so stupid, can I just say that? Amen. <laughs> he is so stupid. Amen. Because just when you think, just when he thinks you're going to be at your weakest point when you see something so grave like that, that is when your faith rises up as a child of God. Oh, my Lord. So, so my, <laughs> hallelujah. So, I, I, I saw that everyone was all over the place. Even I was a little over, all over the place. Like, I guess I should have expected that, but at the same time, it wasn't. So I saw my mom telling my brother, go, give me the, give me the child, give me the child. And my brother was all over the place. He was like, ah. So she, he did eventually give Jeremiah to my mom. My mom laid him on the table so she could do CPR, but not the type of CPR that you think. She was saying, life in the name of Jesus. Life in the name of Jesus. And... Um, <laughs> Praise the Lord. And then my other brother came out and he said, wait, I, I hear him breathing. So his chest started going up and I just, I praise the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And wow. Yes. <clears throat> Amen. Faith works. Yes. So after that, uh, the ambulance did come and I was still holding on to the, to the promise of Psalm 91 where God said, 10,000 may fall at your side and a thousand at your right hand, but it shall not come near you. Hallelujah. No, no plague shall come near your dwelling. I was just holding on to that promise, God. I was saying, God, I trust you. I know that you got this. I know, I know, I know. Amen. So in less than six hours after they took him to the hospital, they said that he had a seizure from a fever that he had. And they, uh, later they did take a test and it, they found out that he did have coronavirus, but we casted that away from him in Jesus' name. Amen. And yeah, in less than six hours, he came back home, Jeremiah, and we have a baby running around the house as if nothing ever happened. <laughs> Praise the Lord. God is so good. God is so good. Yes. And so every single time, amen, <laughs> every single time uh, Jeremiah starts grabbing things and running around the house, screaming, causing havoc, of course, uh, my mom and I call it a blessing. It's truly a blessing. Amen. Amen. Yes. 
And that is our testimony. Thank you so much. <laughs> that is, friends, that is glorious. That is glorious. That is right there is, uh, that's, that's, that's God working. That's God working. And you know what? There's a couple of really important things. And, um, and you know what? The Lord just gave me a different direction. So we're going to, we're going to do that now. But uh, <clears throat> there is, there, that, that's faith. Amen. Friends, that is faith. Um, people have this conception that if I'm going to live a life of faith, we almost feel like we're not going to need to use it. <laughs> right? Like, I, I'm walking this perfect life. I'm not, what a, like, we almost, we, we're, we're, side, we're, we're blindsided when something comes. Right. You know, the Bible says in John 16, 33, that in this world, in this life, the time we're living in right now, and I'm looking at my brother right here who can share something, same thing, miraculous in his own life, you know, uh, literally a miracle back to life again. So, but um, uh, in this world, we're going to have trouble. Yes, right. We're going to have conflict. This is, who is the God of this present age that we live in? The, the devil is. This realm is his realm. It's his realm. But he said to be of good cheer, for I have overcome the world. I've overcome the world. So what we have is this mandate to live a life of faith. The Bible says in Hebrews that the just shall live by faith. Now, if we're not feeding our faith and we're not feeding our spirit on a continual basis, when the conflict comes, we're going to be left without an answer. Or no, we will have an answer, but we will, we will be looking to natural means. Fear can grip us. The suddenly of not knowing what to do overtakes us. And it's at those moments that we need to, right in the midst of it, declare what the Word of God says. But if we don't know what the Word says, then we're not going to declare that. It's so important. It's so important to feed your faith every single day. Every single day. And well, absolutely. There's so, there's so many things. But... The Spirit of God was already prompting you along these lines. He already was. He already was preparing you. This is another reason why it's so important to not be sense-driven. If, we, if we're born again and we're Christians and we do live in this natural physical realm, and that we, nobody denies that. Uh, we don't deny things. We, we arm ourselves or remind ourselves of a greater truth. Amen. You know, the, that's what faith is. The Bible says that faith calls things that are not as though they are. It doesn't say, no, I don't have sickness. It says, my body might be sick right now, but according to the word of God, I've been healed. Amen. Now, that's, that sounds like nonsense to unbelievers. Yeah, that's right. But the truth will make you free. And the truth will save you and set you free. So it's a matter of the, the Holy Spirit leading us and guiding us, checking with him. We make such a habit of this in our faith and healing classes all the time. I talk about this, that, you know, the simple things in life, the normal everyday stuff that we do, we should begin to make a habit in our own life of uh, acknowledging, recognizing the Holy Spirit. Because the real us is a spirit. It's not this flesh. You know, when this flesh goes, they're going to put it in the ground or wherever it goes. But you don't cease to exist. The real you continues to live in one of two places. Heaven or hell. For the believer, it's glorious. We just, we just relocate. But the spirit, so we're spirit beings. We're spirit beings. And uh, we need to, as believers, become more spirit conscious than we are of our sense realm. Come on. Amen. And that's how you begin to walk in the spirit. doesn't mean you walk like a flake. doesn't mean you walk like a weirdo and, and, and people think like, ooh, this mystical weirdo guy. No, it's not. that's not what it's about at all. It's a knowing. It's pausing a little bit and checking on in the inside. And God, every single time, will show you, he'll warn you of danger ahead. Why does bad things happen to Christians? Because they don't listen to the warning. Come on, amen, amen, amen. 
we could say amen or oh me. I've been guilty of not listening to the warning. Am I the only one in here that that's happened to? I didn't think so. But anyway, if we'll heed that, we'll know some things. We'll learn some things. We'll avoid a lot of the problems. Doesn't mean that problems aren't going to come, but we'll have the answer to overcome them. To be of good cheer, like he said, I've overcome the world. So you may be going through something right now. You may be in the midst of a battle in your own life. Uh, my, my, my admonition to you today would be to get into the word of God. This is your answer. Your answer is not found out here in what you can see, in what you can feel, and what you can listen to. It's found in his word. His word is life. The Bible says that everything that we have seen, that we could see with our eyes, was created out of things that were not seen. God used his words to speak things into existence. The same faith that he's given to us. Jesus gave us the, the example. In fact, let's open up to Mark chapter 11. Mark chapter 11. And Mike, whatever that title is doesn't matter because we're doing something else. We're talking, <laughs> we're talking about, we're talking about, I did have another message too, and I wasn't sure when I was going to do this, but th this, was a, this is when we're doing it. Staying in a place of faith. Staying in a place of faith. And when you were just sharing that story, I thought of, and which I love the story, and we've talked about it a bunch of times here, uh, Jairus and his daughter. And Jairus going to Jesus saying, Master, please come. He had faith. That's what made him go to Jesus in the first place, right? Amen. He went to him in faith knowing that, that he was able to do something, that, it, that if he was there, something would happen. And so Jesus said, okay. And, uh, and, and so the time frame from when he released faith in Jesus to, to, to seeing it happen, what took place? His, his daughter died. His daughter died. By all counts, it looked like it was done and over. It was done and over. So as they're making their way, and we know the story, Jesus ministered to several other people, uh, the woman with the issue of blood, while they were on their way to Jairus' house. And obviously, this is an urgent need. Jairus must have been thinking, okay, pray, you can pray for people later on. My daughter is about to die, you know, and he stayed in faith. He stayed in faith. Come on, say, stay in faith. Stay in faith. The answer is staying in faith. The fight, the fighting the good fight of faith is staying in a place of faith. Yes. There are things that will try to get you out of a place of faith. Amen. There's many things that come in our life, that come in our way, that are designed to get you out of a place of faith. Amen. Staying in faith requires a fight. What is, what is the fight? The fight is your mind. The fight is your emotions. The fight is your feelings. The fight is the things that you can see. The fight is the things that people are telling you, that all the experts are saying. It becomes a battle. Amen. It becomes a battle. But if we will stay in faith, what is the answer? It is yes and amen. It will be unto you according to what you believe. Amen. Do you understand that? God, what could you do for me? It's not what he's able to do. It's not about what God is able to do. It's what are you able to believe him for? For nothing shall be impossible to them who beg and plead. To those who, God, please, you need to do this. Is that what it says? No, nothing shall be impossible to those who believe. Not fear. Now, fear is real. Fear will try to grip you. And if you do, it could take you to a bad place. Yes, it, can. it really could. It could cripple you. There's people that don't leave their house because of fear. And fear is real. But faith is more real. Faith is power. Faith is believing what you don't see. It's being confident and certain of what we don't know yet. What we don't see. Faith is the substance, Hebrews 11.1 1 says, of the things that we, we don't see. It's the confidence of the things that we're believing and hoping for. That's what faith is. And it has never failed, and it never will fail. And God is not a respecter of person who he'll work a miracle through. 
He'll work it through any person that will believe it. Because it's not up to him. It's up to us. It's up to us. So we look at that story. Everybody's at Mark 11, right? Amen. We're going to get there. But i got to get there. Mark 11. Um, but so we, we read that story about Jairus. And so Jesus ministers to the woman with the issue of blood. Her faith, what, made her well, right? She knew if I could just touch the hem of his garment, I'll be well. She spent everything she had on physicians and grew worse. And she said, if I could just touch the hem, I don't need him to pray for me. I don't need it. I just need to touch him in faith, in faith. And how many people touched Jesus that day? Multitudes. When they say multitudes, picture, uh, you know, uh, Giants, a Yankee Stadium or the Meadowlands or for the Eagles fans, wherever that may be. Um, <laughs> yeah, don't picture that one though, because there's not that many people there. So anyway, <laughs> but uh, picture 50,000 people. When they talk about multitudes in the scriptures, that's, they're talking numbers like that. They're not taught like, you know, it'd be one thing if, you know, we figure a multitude, we have, you know, I don't know, 80 people here. Well, no, actually, we only have 30. We're on live, right? 30 people. That's it. So uh, <laughs> I think there's 25 here today. But anyway, so uh, but multitudes of people, OK, multitudes of people is a, <laughs> exactly it is a lot of 50,000 people touched Jesus while he was pushing through the crowd on his way to Jairus' house. Because remember, his daughter is at the point of death. Yeah. We're talking, and we're just scratching the tip here because uh, the tip of the iceberg, because we're done, you know, we have a picnic and we got a lot to get going here. But um, <laughs> we're talking about staying in a place of faith. What happens along that journey, along that route? A lot of things happen along that route. A lot of things happen along that route. Bad things, fearful things, unknown things happen on that route. And it surprises some Christians. And we should not be surprised by it. And because we're surprised by it, we, we, we yield to the fear. But if we'll recognize, I don't care what happens along the trail, I already have my answer. I will stay in a place of faith. I will stay in a place of faith. But pastor, it looks like I don't care. what Faith has nothing to do with what you can see. Because if you can see it, you don't need faith. Faith has nothing to do what you can see. Has nothing to do with what you can feel. Nothing. It has to do with believing. 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 How many are Christians in here? How did you receive Christ? By faith. You believed that he came in and, and, and recreated your spirit. The greatest miracle that anybody will ever see, you've already experienced. So anything after that is of a lesser degree. I'm talking about healing in your body. You know, and maybe you didn't see or feel anything. When you first received Christ, people have had so many different experiences. Some people didn't feel a thing. But guess what? They, they, they prayed, and the people that sat there and prayed with them said, now you're saved. And they're like, okay. <laughs> and what did they do? They began to act like they're saved. Amen. Never felt anything, never saw anything, never even heard anything. I just believed it. And what happened as they began to believe? Tell me, someone. What happened as they started acting like they're saved? Did they start seeing things? They started seeing. But what did they have to do first? They had to believe before they saw. That is faith, friends. That is faith. That is our life as a believer. That is how we receive from God. Does not determine the, 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 the time frame in between and the things that happen along that road does not determine whether we have received or not. Now, your mind will tell you it'll, it, it'll, it'll, it'll be a battle. It'll be a fight of faith. The Bible says it is a good fight, the good fight 
of faith. Why is it a good fight? Because if you'll stay in it, you win it. So it's a good fight. It's not a fight that you lose. It's a fight that we win if we'll stay in it, if we'll stay in a place of faith. But know this, that there are going to be things to knock you out of this place of faith. Real things, real feelings, real emotions, real symptoms, all real stuff. But if we'll continue to look at our promise and not the problem, we'll get there. Amen. We'll get there. God will help us. We're not alone. He'll strengthen us. The Holy Spirit will quicken us, and we will receive the promise. Amen. We'll receive the promise. So back to our story, and I am going to get to Mark 11. Just giving you enough time to get there. So I probably gave you enough time to write the whole thing. But anyway... Um, so back to our story. So Jesus ministers to, to, uh, to the woman with the issue of blood. She says, if I could just touch him, all I have to do is touch him. Amen. How many know that we can touch the master anytime, anytime? But you know how you reach out and touch the master? By faith, by faith, with his word, speaking his word, by faith, in faith, you reach out and you touch him. Thank you. Because by all counts, your feelings might be telling you something completely different. By his stripes, I'm healed. And you have 103 fever. Doesn't matter. Symptoms are subject to change. The things in this natural realm are all subject to change. But God's word never, ever changes. Never returns void. Always accomplishes what it's designed to do. So she touches the hem of his garment. In faith, she reached out and touched him. I mean, is there power in a robe? No. There's no power in robes. So don't go, everybody buy robes and we could just touch a garment. If there's no power in that, you understand? The power was in her faith, reaching out in with the hand of faith. When everything else said, what good is this going to do? What good is this? You've been to the best doctors. It's over. You don't even have any more money. Your insurance said you're done, and you're out. And this is what will come and pile up. The enemy likes to use the pile-up effect. You know what I mean? And he'll keep stacking it up, and it looks like it's getting curtains for you. But the midnight hour, if we'll stay in faith, if we'll stay in faith at the midnight hour, it'll come through. It'll happen. You saw it. You saw it. It just happened with you guys. So she, t so she touches him, and he says, whoa, 50,000 people are around the master at this time. And he says, who touched me? Could you imagine if I'm in a crowd? How ridiculous it would be. I mean, we've all been to games before in stadiums, and we're walking through, and you can barely get through. Imagine, like, if I'm with a group of friends, and, and I, all of a sudden I stop, and I'm like, who touched me? Think about that. They'd be like, what did you say? What do you mean? You can't even move. We're on top of each other. Every who You should say, who's not touching me? But he says, who touched me? And the disciples said to him, well, master, everybody's touching you. There's throngs of people around you. I mean, there's the multitudes. He said, no, no. I felt power go out of me. Power went out of me. Power went out of me. Power, power went out of me. Like real power. <laughs> what activates the power? Faith activates the power. Frank, flip the switch off for one second. All right, now, you see these. The, the, is there power still available here? Just because we don't see, just because we don't see the light. If we'll activate that switch, there's the power. That, that activating that switch or that power produces what we have here. You know, faith in God acted upon, faith acted upon produces power. It produces results. It produces results. And faith calls things that they may, may not see as though they already have it. You begin to look at those things that way. You begin to see it as that way. You begin to see yourself doing things that... Healthy people can do. Come on, amen. 
You know, you begin to see yourself doing it. Even when your body's saying something different right now, or doctors are saying something different. Faith keeps its eyes on the promise. So she touches his garment, power went out of me. Power went out of me. And he turns around and said, who touched me? And she's like, oh man, what do I do now? She's like, it, it was me, <laughs> I touched you. And he, he said to her, your faith. What, uh, whose faith? faith? Who's faith? He said to you, daughter, my ability made you whole. Is that what he said? He said, daughter, power went out of me because I'm so strong and powerful. I was able to make you whole. What did he say? He said, your faith just made you well. Just made you well. And I'm here to tell us today, our faith, our staying, 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 say staying. Our staying in a place of faith will make you well. The Bible's very specific, friends, that uh, in Hebrews chapter 10, in verse 35, it says, cast not away your confidence, which has a great recompense of reward, so that after you have done the will of God, you'll receive the promise. For you have need of endurance. For you have need of patience. Why do we need patience? Because we're in a fight. Yeah. There's going to be things along the journey that are going to try to discredit, try to knock you down, try to get you in doubt, try to get you in fear, try to get you depressed, to let go of the promise of God. You hear people say, just let go and let God. That's not a scripture. It's not in the Bible. We don't let go and let God. If you're worrying and you're concerned, well, then let go of the cares and the worries and, 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 and trust God. But when it comes to receiving from God, in fact, he told us opposite. Lay hold and hold fast. You have need of endurance. That after you've released faith, you're going to need some patience. You're going to need to stir yourself up to receive the promise. This is real faith. That's real faith. And that's how faith works. That's how we receive from God. We need to continue to stay in a place of faith. Yes, so hallelujah. Jairus, remember we were talking about that too. He, uh, you know, if, you, if you'll come and touch my daughter, I know she's at the point of death, she'll be made whole. So they're on their way to Jairus' house. A miracle happens because of this woman's faith. She received her miracle and got healed. And... Uh, and, and you know what, God, he, he's, he's doing the same thing today. <laughs> he's doing the same. He has not forgotten how to watch over his word and perform it. In fact, he's waiting for someone to dare to stay in faith. And we know, I, I know people in here that have stayed in faith Amen. and that have seen miracles in their life, Amen. have seen the impossible when everyone else said it was impossible, has seen the impossible become possible Amen. because all things are possible. For those who will believe. We can look death in the face and say, you're not a master over me. He promised me long life, I will have long life. He promised that, 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 that uh, according to his word, he healed me. I was cursed with sickness and disease, but he came and became that for me. So guess what? It's impossible for me to stay sick because he already took it. Now, that's faith-filled words. Amen. You don't just wake up casually and start talking that way. You have to see it. You have faith comes by hearing the anointed word of Christ. Not hearing the anointed word of the doctors. Not hearing the, I, I'm all for doctors. Uh, in fact, God gives them the wisdom to help yeah. us. Yeah, exactly. Okay, but my faith is not in a doctor. Nope. My faith is in God. And I pray for the doctor that they have the wisdom of God yeah. to help me. Amen. That's what I do. But I have the word. I have the word. I have a report that says, by his stripes, I was healed. I was healed. So if I stay in a place of faith and refuse to get off of that, what am I going to have? There's no question in my mind. You will receive your healing. You will receive your healing. Friends, it's not up to me. I wish it was at some times. But it's not. It's up to you. Amen. It's up to you. So how do we get to this place of believing? How? 
if pastor, if you're telling me this is what we can have, how do we get there? You need to spend time in the word, in the word, meditate on it day and night. You will be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that brings forth fruit in its season. Your leaf will never wither, and whatever you do will prosper. Amen. Will prosper. Read Hebrews 11. Every one of those patriarchs that are listed in there are listed in there for a reason. Amen. They stayed in a place of faith. They heard from God, and they stayed with it till they received the promise. Till they receive the promise. So here we are, New Testament. Jairus, he's saying, "Let's get to my, let's get to the house." So they're on their way to the house. Jairus is in faith the whole time. He's in faith the whole time, believing that when Jesus gets there, his daughter will be made whole. As they're going, what happens? What happens? The bad report. The bad report. You're in faith. You prayed. You believe in God. You believe in God? You're excited about this? I know, I know, I know, I know. I'm good, I'm good. Glory to God. Thank you, Father. Stir myself up, and you get a bad report. What is that bad report designed to do to us spiritually? It's, it, it, it's, it's designed to cause us to begin to waver, to begin to doubt, to begin to start saying, man, I thought I was doing everything that I was supposed to. Those little suggestions. And you start looking. And you start investigating. And God did not call us to investigate. He called us to believe. He said, just believe. All things are possible to those who investigate. No, 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 no. Not to those who investigate. To those who believe. Who believe. And this is so important. You mean... Even if I get a report that I have two weeks to live? Yes. Even in a report that tells you that you have two weeks to live. Is the word real? Does it work? Then I don't care if they told me I have two minutes. Because in two minutes, you're going to see a miracle. <laughs> two minutes, you're going to see a miracle. So get ready. Did it happen with Paul and Silas? Did it? When it looked like it was over. What did they do? By faith, by faith, they began to sing. Did you think they wanted to sing? Locked up in the inner prison, shackles bound after being uh, beaten just because they loved the Lord? They didn't feel like it, but they did it by faith. And what happened? We know the story. Faith activates the power. Faith will cause an earthquake in your life. It'll cause shackles to come right off of you. So, he gets the report. Don't bother Jesus. Your daughter has died. That can blow the wind completely out of your sails. Anyone who says differently, they're lying. Okay? We don't deny that. Okay? Okay? Right away, I, I, I could imagine Jairus, his, 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 the emotion that must have flooded through him as a, as a father. You know, hearing that, hearing that, I was so close. And what did Jesus, now, now, now this, is, this is it right here. What did Jesus say to him? What did Jesus say to him? He said, fear not. Fear not, only believe, or keep on believing. But your mind will say, but what do you mean? They're already dead. What do you mean? He said, fear not. Keep on believing. Whew. He had to stay in a place of faith. If Jesus said it, I believe it, and that settles it. If the master said, fear not, I don't understand it. They said that she's dead already, but he told me to fear not. So, God, I'm not going to fear I'm not going to fear. I'm going to keep on believing based on your word. And, and so they continued on. He said, hold on, hold on. Stay. The same faith, the same faith that you approached me with didn't go anywhere. The only thing that changed in this whole equation is your daughter died. The circumstance changed. That's a serious circumstance, but nothing too big for the, for the power of God. Nothing's too big for the, for the power of God. Say that. Nothing. 
No matter what you're facing, no matter how close you are to the end, nothing is too big for my God. Nothing. If I will stay in a place of faith, I will receive. They continue on, and I'm sure there had to be all sorts of emotions. Fighting is mine. Oh, my God. It was, you know, but stayed in faith. And because he stayed in faith, there's a reason that story's in the Bible. And there's a reason that it's attached with the story of someone dying. Because you don't really get any more final than that. But yet, death is no match. It's not superior to the power of God. If we'll stay in faith. That means you can lay hands on the sick in faith and they can be healed. They can be healed. It's based on believing. God wants to manifest himself through the church like that today. He does. But he's looking for people who will stay in a place of faith that will trust him. Look at the ministries of, uh, of, of the ministers of old and the miracles that they had, and study their lifestyle, and study what they did. They were people of faith. Amen. Every one of us sitting in this room have the same ability to get to that place in our life Amen. of walking by faith, living by faith, calling things that be not as though they are, not living under my circumstances. I live on top of my circumstances because greater is he that is in me and if I'll obey the voice of the Spirit of God I won't be having so many circumstances and the ones that do try to come I will rise right above them believe and receive he said that's right doubt and you will do without Jairus did not doubt he must have been tempted Oh, man, was he tempted. Jesus was tempted. And we're tempted. But we can overcome. So he stayed in faith. They get there. Jesus threw all the negative people. Get out. Everybody out. Everybody out. We're not playing in a funeral here. Everybody out. Everybody out. She's about to get up. And he said, she, your daughter's only sleeping. He called things. By faith, by faith, he went in and she, he called her, told her to wake up, told her to get up. And what happened? She got up. She got up. She got up because of faith. You understand that? Jairus stayed in faith. Jesus did that, anointed by the Holy Spirit, just like we are. He didn't do that as God. He didn't do that as deity. People will say, oh, well, he did that because he's God. He didn't do it that way. <laughs> he didn't do it that way because if he did, then he couldn't expect us to do it. Because we're not God. He did it just like we will do it. That's how he did it. Anointed by the Holy Spirit. How many are anointed by the Holy Spirit in here? Then there's nothing that you cannot do. If you'll listen to him and, and obey him, even when your mind says, you're nuts, you're crazy, this makes zero sense. You just say, mine, you have nothing to say about this. I'm sorry. You may think I'm crazy, but that's all right. I'm going to act on what the word says. I'm going to act on what his word says. If I see it in here, I can have it. I believe it. I believe it. So I'm going to read this to you, and we're going to close with this. Mark, I told you to go to Mark 11, and I haven't forgotten about it. <laughs> Mark 11. <clears throat> we'll start in verse, uh, verse 12. Mark 11 and verse 12. Now this, this story and this instance or this occurrence is in Scripture for our admonition for us to learn something from. And Jesus was trying to teach his disciples the principle of faith. Amen. And so... It's just as appropriate and, and, and important and necessary for us today to, to heed this. So, and we've heard the story before. Uh, verse 12 says this. Now the next day, when they had come out of Bethany, he was hungry, Jesus. 
And seeing from afar a fig tree having leaves, he went to see if perhaps he would find something on it, some fruit. When he came to it, he found nothing but leaves, for it was not the season for figs. In response, this is important. There's so much just in this verse right here, 14. In response, Jesus said to it. Who, what, what did he, who's he talking to here? He's talking to the tree. He's talking to the tree. All right? Something that we, that we need to learn here. Amen. That we, I don't want to get ahead of myself. So in response, Jesus said to it, let no one eat from you ever again. And his disciples heard it. So he said it, obviously, loud enough for his disciples to hear it. Now, when he said that, the disciples must have been like, wow, that's not very nice. You know, why would he, you know, have to be so mean to the tree? You know what I mean? That's awful, the poor tree, you know. But he spoke to the tree. He spoke to the tree. This is important for us to hear and understand because he's, he's teaching us something. He didn't get down. Number one, there's another thing to note. He did it loud enough so that the people around him could hear him. And he didn't get down on his knees and begin to pray and seek his father about this fig tree. Did he? He never did. It, there's a reason why he didn't. And it's something for us to learn. Amen. He didn't get down and pray about it. He spoke to it and said, may no one ever eat fruit from you again. And that was it. Nothing happened. It wasn't a lightning bolt. It didn't come down and go, shoo, and blow the tree up. Nothing happened. That was it. They all, and they walked on. And the disciples must have been scratching their head and said, wow, that was weird, but okay. You know, and they went on their way. And then, and then you have, uh, let me, for time's sake, then he goes to the temple and he throws everybody out of there because he said, you know, my, my temple should not be a place of business and trade and commerce. It's the temple of God. And, uh, and so, so that was that, the place of prayer. So let's go to verse 20 of the same chapter. And now here is the lesson of the fig tree. See, everything that Jesus did, it was not, every word that he ever said had some purpose in it he was never just saying i'm just saying he was never just saying he was always teaching us something something so here's the lesson this goes exactly with what we're talking about today staying in a place of faith Amen. you know the just live by faith faith needs to be our foundation for everything that we do now in the morning, verse 20, as they passed by, they saw the fig tree dried up from the roots. Now that's important to know too. Because something started happening, but they just couldn't see it. Amen. Right? When he cursed that thing, it started drying up at the root already. Even though after he said it, they didn't see anything. Right? Faith. 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 And Peter, remembering, said to Jesus, Rabbi, look. The fig tree which you cursed has withered away. So Jesus, so he said it so that they can hear him. Knowing full well, staying in faith, that this tree was going to shrivel up because he did it by faith. And now he's teaching them how they can do this. He looked at him, and it, Peter was amazed. The fig tree that you cursed has withered away. 22, Jesus answered and said to them, Have the God kind of faith. Have faith in God. Ha in other words, use the same faith that God uses. Do you hear that? Amen. Not just have faith in God, because if you break it down in the Greek, he's saying use the same faith that God uses. Amen. God lives by faith, just like we're to live by faith. Amen. Have faith in God. Have the God kind of faith. And then he says, verse 23, for assuredly, what does assuredly mean? Most certainly, this is guaranteed. This isn't something that, well, you know, you never know. This is for certainly, 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 for certain, I say to you, whoever says to this mountain, be removed and be cast into the sea and does not doubt in his heart, but believes that those things he says will be done, he will have whatever he says. And let's look at verse 24. Now we're going to come back and pick this apart. 
verse 24 says, Therefore I say to you, whatever things that you desire or that you ask for when you pray, believe that you receive them and you might have them. There's a 50-50 chance that you'll receive them. If you pray hard enough, if you, you know, fast for three months, if you'll give everything you have and feed the poor, no, it doesn't say that. Whatever you ask when you pray, if you will believe, you will have them. You will have them. Believe and receive. When do you receive it? The minute you believe it. Amen. It goes hand in hand. How do we believe it? By faith. By faith. Why do we believe it? Because his word said so. If you can see it in here, he used the fig tree as a lesson for us. And we're learning it still today. And we're never going to stop learning it. We're going to continue to grow in our faith. And it's progressive. And we're never going to get to the place where we know it all. Because we don't. And we're going to learn it and grow in faith even when we're in heaven. We're going to continue growing in faith. But the, the, there's a couple things that I want us to learn from this. Jesus spoke to the problem. Amen. He spoke to the tree. He spoke to the tree. And that's not the first time Jesus spoke to the problem. He also spoke to fevers. Peter's mother-in-law had a fever, remember? And he spoke to the fever. He didn't get down and say, let's all join hands and pray together. He never did that. There's a place for prayer. But when there are things that God has already given to us in his word, it's not time to pray about them. It's time to speak what his word says. Amen. Speaking it by faith. If it were not so, Jesus wouldn't have done it that way. Amen. He would have said, all right, let's get together here and I'm going to teach you something. Let's pray and let's seek God about this fig tree. <laughs> Nothing like that happened. He didn't give an explanation. He didn't do anything. He just said, tree, no one eat from you ever again. And he walked on. And his disciples said, boy, that was weird. So... And they come back and they saw that the fig tree was dried up. And then he tells them in verse 23, listen to me, this is important. Whatsoever things, whosoever can say to this mountain or your problem or your situation. But I love the fact that he used mountain because because it's big, because mountains are big. But he was saying, if it's as big as a mountain. So... I mean, everything else is less than that, <laughs> right? Everything else is kind of less than that. He said, if you'd say to your mountain, if he'd say to your sickness or your lack or your fear or your worry or your anxiety or your depression or your diabetes or whatever it is, if you'd say to it, be removed. He didn't say, if you'd get down on your knees and seek me. There's a place for getting on your knees and seeking God. There's a place for the believers coming together and praying for our nation. There's a time for that. I'm not discounting prayer at all. We see that Jesus went away every night and prayed. But when you see him ministering to the sick, you don't see him praying. You see him declaring. You see him speaking. You see him speaking. You, him speaking. you don't see him praying. Even with, with Lazarus. He didn't pray. He didn't pray. He said, Father, I am doing this so that they know, they can hear. And I thank you, is what he said, that you always hear me. And then he said, Lazarus, come up. Get out. Come forth. That's what he said. He didn't get on his knees and say, Father, I need the anointing. No, we have the anointing. The Holy Ghost living inside of us. If we as believers will begin to stir ourselves up along these lines, there is nothing that we will not be able to overcome, to deal with, and to receive victory in. Every single time. Every single time. If it were not so, Jesus would not have showed us this. He wouldn't have said it. He wouldn't have said it. He's not setting us up for disaster. He's not going to say, oh, let me write this and then trick him because it won't work. That's what people will tell you. That's what the enemy will tell you. 
because of circumstances, we'll tell you, yeah, well, I guess it really didn't work. No, it always works. It always works for the person who will always stay in faith. That's the one it works for. We know this. Quitters never win, and winners never quit, which is how they became a winner. We know what happens if we quit, right? And listen, going for three years believing and then quitting is the same thing as never believing to start with. Why would we go that far and then give up now? Because the enemy keeps doing the pile-up effect. I haven't seen anything changing. You don't need to see anything changing. But pastor, 10 years? You're still living, aren't you? You're living. You're waking up in the morning. You're healed. You're speaking the word. How long did Abraham wait? Huh? How long? Someone tell me. 20. Has anyone in here waited 25 years for something? We don't want to wait 25 minutes. We'll drive an extra 50 miles to not have to wait 25 minutes. Staying in a place of faith. Amen. Staying in a place of faith. Now, that, that there's how we stay in that, we've looked at some of the mechanics here. Next week, we're going to talk about some principles that I'm going to give to us that will help us to stay in a place of faith. This morning, I wanted us to see that it is possible. All things are possible if we'll believe. All things. There's nothing, nothing, nothing. Not death, not anything shall be impossible if you'll believe. If, and we don't have to get down and pray this long, please help me God kind of prayer. Why are we asking him for something that he already gave you? Wouldn't it be foolish if you gave me your car and every time I saw you, I'm like, Mike, can you please give me your car? <laughs> Think about that for a minute. Serious. If, if every time I saw him, he'd be like, oh, hey, Mike, how's it going? Can you give me your car? He'd be like, dude, what is wrong with you? You already have it. Yeah, I know, but I'm not really sure if I have it. Can you give it to me again? I don't have anything else to give you. I already gave it to you. We are not to pray and ask God for something that he already has given us. He's given us his word on it. He said, if you'll say, notice what he says, say, whoever says to this mountain, be removed and be cast into a sea. And does not doubt in his heart, because that's where faith is, but believes that the things he says shall be done. He will have whatsoever he says. Most people would read it like this. For surely I say unto you, whoever prays about this mountain and tells it to be cast in the sea and does not doubt in his heart, but believes that the things that he prayed about, he will have what he prayed about. Jesus is teaching us that you can speak. The Bible is full of scriptures that tells us that life and death are in the power of our tongue. And those who, who live according to will eat the fruit of our own lips. We have, now, please don't go out here saying, Pastor said we don't need to pray. No, there are things we need to pray about. That is not what I'm saying. Okay? We need to pray. But we don't need to pray and ask God for things that he's already shown us and given to us. It's time to step out in faith and start speaking to it. Amen. Start speaking to the problem. Start speaking to lack and doubt. And then when you speak to it, listen to the Holy Spirit inside of you, uh, 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 encourage you, and show you how to stay out of debt. Or show you how to stay here. Maybe there's some things that you're doing in the natural that, you, that, that, that are hurting you. So as you begin to speak it in faith, the Holy Ghost will come inside and speak to you and give you instruction how to stay that way. And then it's up to us to believe it and to act on it. But if we don't believe it and we don't act on it, we don't get it. And then when we don't get it, we blame God. And we tell everyone else this doesn't work. I'm tired of hearing that. It's not God's problem. He's never the problem. He's always the answer. It's time for us to look at ourselves. Are we going to stay in a place of faith or are we going to be led by our emotions and our feelings? Amen. Friends, this is a place that the body of Christ needs to begin to rise up in. We're not living our life according to what we feel and see. We live our life according to the doctrine of his word, the decrees of his word, Amen. his word, his word. By his stripes, I am healed. Amen. 
He is Jehovah Jireh, my provider. All of my needs are met according to His riches and glory. He is my sole source. Everything that I need, everything that I desire, everything that I want will come from Him. He'll use channels all throughout this world, but I'm looking to Him. I'm not looking for channels. I'm looking for Him. He's the source. He's the source. Let's stand up on our feet. And we'll continue this next week. Hallelujah. Don't you love talking about faith? Faith brings strength and life to you. It does. It makes you realize that everything is possible if we'll believe. If we'll believe. Staying in a place of faith. Hallelujah. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this time together, Lord. Thank you for your precious holy word to us. Lord, we trust you. We know that your word is always working. It's producing in our lives. You watch over your word to see to it that it accomplishes everything that it's sent forth to do. You've given us the Holy Ghost to strengthen us, to quicken us, to help us and sustain us as we fight the good fight of faith. We are not fighting in our own strength. We're strong in you. And we overcome by the words of our mouth and by what we speak, Father. May you be glorified in us today and through us. I thank you that the spirit of faith is rising up inside of us as we feed it, Father. And our spirit is fed, our faith grows stronger. And we learn how to overcome every obstacle that will come our way. For nothing shall be impossible. Say that. Nothing Nothing. shall be impossible for me because I'm a believer. I'm not a doubter. I'm not an investigator. I don't question. I don't care why. I only believe. Therefore, everything shall come to pass in my life according to His Word. It shall be. Healing shall be. Prosperity shall be. Sharp and sound mind shall be. Clear hearing shall be. Good eyesight shall be. Strong backs shall be. Strong healthy knees shall be. Everything. My body will work and function at 100%. Father, according to your word, be it unto me. Because I believe. I believe. You said it. You said that whoever shall say unto this mountain, be removed and be cast into the sea and does not doubt it in his heart but believes that the things he said shall happen. He will have what he says. Therefore, when you pray, believe that you receive them and you shall have them. Father, we believe right now that we receive. Just lift your hands towards heaven. Say that. Say, I believe I receive. I believe I receive. I believe I receive. I believe believe I'm healed. I call myself healed. I call myself prosperous. I thank you that I have wisdom, and I thank you that I have life according to your word. Father, I thank you today. I thank you that it is working in our life. You're working things out six months down the road for us already. Things are being worked out for our good. You're you're tweaking and changing things and making things happen that we can't even see that six months from now are going to be greater than where we're at right now. Hallelujah. I know that. I know that. All things work together for our good. Glory to God. And it just does us good to start decreeing those things and to start talking that way. And when you start talking like that, start acting like that. Because faith requires action. Amen? And if you believe those things are happening, then we should be happy. We should be rejoicing. We should be jumping up and down because good things are coming our way. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And we will stay in a place of faith. I don't care if it's six months, six years, 16 years. I will stay in a place of faith. Glory to God. God bless you guys. I'm so glad you all came and stayed listening. Stay after. Wait, let me say this to you real quick. Um, We are having our picnic today. We're going to have a good time. I don't know if the grill guy is here yet. He is here. All right, cool. So, uh. So he's out there setting up. We're going to have an ice cream truck. If you bought tickets and paid, as soon as you leave here today, go outside. There's going to be a table. We're going to put a wristband on you. If you want to come and you haven't paid yet, you can do so at the table. And they'll, they'll mark it down and they'll put a wristband on you. We invite everyone to stay. We're going to have a good time. God bless you, and we'll see you again.